welcome back. So we're gonna be doing a big topic on weddings and not so happy endings, aka breakup, aka separation, aka the D word, D I V O R C E, but I can't say that word because it's gotta stay within the guidelines. So I'm gonna refer to separation or breakups. Why is marriage such a big deal in Korea? How much do weddings actually cost in Korea? Why it's a burden to get married into a Korean family? And if you're a celebrity, why sponsors and dramas could drop you? And why separation could potentially disable your entertainment career and how that shapes your public image. So if you look at it globally, if you look at 1960, there was only 12% of separations. And look at 2017 or current rate, there's 44%. <laughs> that is high, high, high. The global separation rate has increased 251.8%. We are not happy, you guys. We're not happy in marriages. Separation rate by major religion. Christian religion has 30% separation rate, meaning it is the highest out of all religions. We have the Hindu religion, which is only 1% separation rate. Wow, okay, that is very interesting. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe there is still a lot of arranged marriages. And also there is love marriages as well. But statistically, there are more separation in love marriage than arranged marriages. So that is definitely an interesting thing to look at. Number of marriages in Korea. There's about 300 to 350,000 between marriages and then and now it's dramatically going down. Oh my god. Let's talk about falling in love in Korea. So there is still something called sunch. It kind of translates to arranged matchmaking by your parents. So these people are pre-screened by your parents. Your parents already kind of approve of them because in Korea, marriages need to be blessed by your in-laws, by your family. And if your family is against your partner, that makes it so difficult to get married. There's just so much pressure by your in-law. You basically have to be stranded from your family if you want to get married to someone that your family disagrees with. So these people are usually pre-screened to match your criteria or at least your class, if that makes sense. So you meet someone that potentially can end up in a happy, marriage when it comes to terms with money, with the type of job. So you don't walk into these arranged sun matchmaking thinking you're just going to date them. You're basically walking in knowing that you're trying to find a partner. If you are Korean and you live in Korea, you will notice that your family, your colleagues, especially your grandparents, they will all pressure you. When are you getting married? When are you getting married? Especially if you're not married by late 30s, people will think like there's something wrong with you. The interesting thing is, especially in America, a lot of people get married when they're young. I know people like who get married right after high school, you know, at 18, your parents kick you out and you're allowed to do whatever you want. And then you get married when you're like 18, 19. You don't need your parents' blessings in America. You technically just do whatever you want, whatever race you want. It's not really typically looked down at or it's not like a big deal. Like you could get married in like Las Vegas. It's so easy to get married in America. But in Korea, it's not really common to get married when you're super young. Especially not when you're 18, 19, 20. People usually want you to get a good job, you want to make a certain living, and you gotta pay for the big wedding. So there's no way you're going to get married when you're young unless you know you have a kid. As the statistics show that in Korea, not a lot of people are getting married these days. The falling number of marriages has been largely attributed to economic factors including low pay, poor job security, and lack of affordable housing. One survey last year showed that the average cost of wedding in Korea was about $40,000 to $90,000. Compared to the US, about it's around $35,000 to have a decent wedding in the US. As you can see, getting married in Korea means a lot of financial burden. So the one key traditional thing that you do in Korea is usually the in-laws gifts you with something expensive to each other. Especially in Korea, it is really important to have that perfect wedding, meaning you need to have a wedding at a, at a wedding ceremony place or at a church. You usually invite a lot of people. It's like a big ceremony and you have like a big buffet and you show each other that you found the right perfect person and that perfect person is making decent money and that your wedding off to someone that will take care of you for the rest of your life. So it's not such an easy decision that you can make. Also, it is very important to buy like a newly wed apartment or a house for yourself. And you guys know in Korea, housing prices are soaring up to unbelievable prices. Not a lot of people in your 20s or even in your 30s, you could afford like half a million dollar 
one apartment floor. Also, there is still a little bit of question of sexism in Korea. So reports say if women typically get married and have a baby, their position at work can be burdened. So that is also the reason why women don't want to get married or have kids super young because your job could be potentially endangered. And that goes for the entertainment world as well, or even harsher for the entertainment world, which we will get into. Also affects same-sex marriages not recognized in South Korea at the moment. I'm not sure about any other country. So you guys let me know if in your country same-sex marriage is recognized We gotta talk about the image game in Korea so growing up in the United States I've seen a lot of single mothers. I've seen a lot of stepmothers or stepfathers. You have stepbrothers I mean the family thing is like very open here, but in Korea if you're a single mother That is kind of looked down at attention that you have in Korea, especially if you're separated with kids It's hard to go back to the dating game and have someone accept that also remarriage is kind of looked down at unless you're like really really older unless you're an older person and you're widowed meaning if your you know partner has passed away it's okay to get remarried but other than those kind of cases it's really looked down at to get remarried of course not everyone thinks that hence the reason why it is so important to choose the right person when you get married in Korea this is a fun fun fact until recently did you know that you couldn't marry the same clan it was usually kind of known as incest if you do marry someone of the same clan plan or same last name. So let's go into the K-pop world of separation. So the shortest marriages in the K-pop celebrity world is Itan and Lee Min Hyo, who was only married for 12 days, and then we have actress Kim Tong, who was only married for three days. She beat Kim Kardashian, and then we have famous TV personality Kim Na Young, Park Eun Hye, and then we have. Idols who have separated already. They're still in their like 20s. We have idol Yumin who used to be an ex Rania members She apparently got a baby, got married, went to a honeymoon, and then separated all within the six months We have Yuki's Tongo, Tong Egyu, and Son Jung Gi. Girl, we all know about that We have Koo Eun and An Jae Yeon who has been hot in the press for their separation news so Let's talk about Koo Eun and An Jae Yeon. So they've been married for three years, married since 2016 So right now they they do want to get a separation, but it is a he said, she said case. Kwezon is basically saying that her husband wasn't there for her emotionally or as a husband. And Anjan is basically saying he needed to like get a psychologist right after marriage because it was so hard for him. I mean, we never know the true root and the true cause of their breakup. So it's really not in our positions to say anything or side with anyone if we're not personally friends with them. So we don't know what kind of separation they will go for. Um, obviously, this is not a an amicable one. It is the best to just have a amicable separation because if you go to court, it's just going to get messy. It's going to take a couple of years. The other side could ask for the assets of the other person. I mean, it just gets messy. We have Song Egyu and Song Jugi, one of the most liked Song Song couple. I've watched The Descendant of the Sun. That was one of the best dramas that I've ever seen. The love life, and they became a real life couple. They got married in October 2017, so they've been only married for two years. Song Joong Gi filed for separation June 2019, so it was only a couple months ago. They actually filed for amicable separation, so the court has approved and it's in the process of them actually legally being separated. So Song Joong Gi stated, rather than denouncing each other and arguing over who is to blame, I hope that the separation process can be wrapped up amicably. There's actually a new possible clause in drama contracts that if there's a scandal by separation, you have to pay three times for the damages. You guys know that the Song Joong Gi was in the middle of his drama being aired on TV, but the separation news has come out and that actually made the ratings go down. There was an endorsement that An Jae Yeon was doing and his endorsement sponsor dropped him because there's a lot of bad press about him. When there's a lot of bad press about someone, that could affect like someone else's business because you're using them as a model and people might not buy their products. There's different types of separation. There is Hubby Eon, there's Tojong Yeon, there's Tepan Yeon, so amicable mediation and court. So these are the list of grounds for separations in Korea. I didn't even know that you need a reason to get a separation, you know what I mean? So the number one reasons why people get separated is lack of fulfillment in love and difficulties over finances. So that is the number one reasons why people get separated. There's also conflict over family funds, work expectations, how to handle household matters, and time spent away from partner and children grow. 
as reasons. Recently, our generation believes that less than half of Korean women believe marriage is a must. Number of births last year hit an all-time low of 1.5 births per woman. Some people are actually joking that by the year 2700, I believe, that there will be no Koreans left because of such a low birth rate. Statistics also show that average age of Korean men getting married hit a record high of 32.9 years. Average age at which Korean women had their first child was 31.6, the oldest in the world. So because the lives of Korean women are improving now, we just see marriage as you know, not an important thing anymore. We are able to fend for ourselves, feed ourselves, have a job for ourselves, so we don't need to lean on a partner. Back in the past, a lot of Korean women couldn't walk away from their marriages. I have a relative of mine that my mom told me that, you know, before I was born, her sister didn't have a happy marriage with her husband. She ran away from her marriage, her husband a lot of times, and she was just so miserable. But because she couldn't fend for herself, she couldn't live without the support of her husband and because she had kids, there was no way that she was able to really be separated. That is not something I want for myself or I want for any of my friends. So I want you guys to let me know what you guys think of marriages in this generation. And we all have, you know, our personal preferences and what we want in our life. So it's totally okay if you guys do want to get married and you guys do want to have kids when you're young. So if you guys like that, hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe for more content and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time bye